Jefferson Fracture Fifty percent of patients with Jefferson Fracture will have associated spine injuries. The canal is wide with low risk of a spinal cord injury unless the transverse ligament is disrupted. It is difficult to visualize the fracture on an X-ray. It's usually seen on the lateral X-ray of the C spine. It is a junctional fracture, so it could be missed. The classic Jefferson fracture is a burst fracture that results from an axial load. It could be a four-part fracture with bilateral fractures of the anterior and posterior arch. There are variations which include two- and three-part fractures. Incomplete formation of the posterior arch can be mistaken as a fracture. Anatomy. Here is C1 and here is C2. C1 and C2 are stabilized together by the transverse ligament. C1 and C2 provides 50% of rotation of the neck. C1 is a ring. At the upper cervical region, the spinal canal is two and a half times larger than the cord size. The stability and the treatment of Jefferson fracture depend on the integrity of the transverse ligament and the displacement of the fracture. You got to know about the important ligaments that's related to Jefferson fracture. The transverse ligament, the apical ligament, and the alar ligament. Here is a simulation of an axial load creating a burst fracture of C1. And the question is, is it just a bony injury or a bony and ligamentous injury? How do you diagnose if you have ligamentous injury or not? You check the ADI, which is the atlanto dense interval. Normally, it should be less than 3 mm in adult and normally less than 5 mm in children. If it is between 3 and 5 mm, it means there is an injury to the transverse ligament. This ligament that's holding the odontoid and C1 together. The alar ligament and the apical ligament will be intact. If it is more than 5 mm ADI, then there will be injury to the transverse and to the alar and apical ligaments. So let's check the types of Jefferson fractures. Here is the transverse ligament and here there is a bony injury with intact transverse ligament. So when you look at the characteristics of that injury, you find the lateral mass displacement is less than 7 mm and the atlanto dense interval is less than 3 mm. It is a stable fracture and it should be treated by rigid orthosis if the fracture is non-displaced. If the fracture is displaced, you can use a halo. Here is another type where there is a bony injury of C1 with a transverse ligament tear. The ADI will be more than 3 mm in adult. The treatment depends on what type of injury to the transverse ligament. With bony avulsions of the transverse ligament, you can use a halo cautiously. However, some surgeons prefer to do fusion of C1 and C2. If there is inter-substance tear of the transverse ligament, you will do C1 and C2 fusion.
and you need to do early surgery because this is a significant injury with a risk of spinal cord compression. What is the story of the open mouth view? This is the normal overhang as seen in an open mouth view. If it is just a bony injury, Jefferson fracture, the combined overhang will be less than 7 mm, and it means the transverse ligament is intact. It is a stable fracture. If you see a Jefferson fracture with more than 7 mm combined overhang, which is about 8 mm with magnification, then the transverse ligament is probably torn and this is probably unstable fracture. This is an open mouth view x-ray and this is the normal and in this open mouth view there is more than 7 mm combined overhang. This fracture is unstable. The fact is, CT scan is probably the best study in diagnosing the characteristics of the bony injury, and the MRI is the best study in diagnosing any associated transverse ligament injury. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.